good evening, everyone. Welcome to Touchstone Essentials Live this evening. Um, I'm Cindy Clement, and yes, I no longer look like my photo. Hold on a second here. I got to figure out how to share my screen. All right, there we go. Um, I no longer look like that photo. I've gone natural um, on the advice of my 15-year-old granddaughter who said, Grandma, you need to embrace your 70 years. So, of course, out of the mouths of babes, we got to listen, right? But, folks, most of you are familiar with my semi-monthly webinar presentations. And if you've missed any of them, you can find them on the Touchstone Essential website. And so far, there are 26 of them. It's wonderful. My friend Craig Daly um, of many years and our typical host for the evening is in Scottsdale, Arizona, I think tonight attending a webinar. And so he's not going to be with us this, e this evening. So we're going to get started. And our presentation tonight is on reproductive health. Now, you may recall that during our last presentation, when we were discussing the endocrine glands or the hormones, I mentioned that we would be talking about the ovaries and the testes tonight as we discussed um, the uh, reproductive system. So let's begin. We'll talk about the female reproductive system first. Now, this female reproductive system, it does, of course, a number of things, including producing our hormones, eggs and nurturing and protecting the developing fetus. Now the release of eggs in the female body typically begins around puberty, which can be just about any age these days, and ends in our 50s or later or earlier for some women. The average reproductive life of a female is really only 38 years. And out of the 400,000 eggs that we are born with, only about 400 of those will be released during our reproductive life. Now, the ovaries are about the size and shape of an almond, and their job is to produce the eggs and the hormones, estrogen and progesterone. Now, of course, there is one ovary on each side of the uterus, and they're connected to each other by the fallopian tubes. Now these tubes are about four inches long and they are the passageway that carries that egg from the ovaries to the uterus. And they're only about a quarter of an inch in diameter. Now the egg's journey is about five days long from the time it leaves the ovary till it gets to the uterus. But the life of that egg is really only 24 to 48 hours after being released from the ovaries. So the fertilization of that egg by the sperm normally occurs in that fallopian tube. And then that fertilized egg then moves to the uterus where it implants in that uterine lining. Now, the uterus, of course, is it's a hollow, a pear-shaped organ, and that is the home for the developing fetus. And that endometrial, that, that blood-rich lining that supports the implantation of the egg in pregnancy, that's what it's there for. And if we're not pregnant, of course, it sloughs off about every 28 days or so during menstruation. Now, the, the uterus itself is divided into two parts. So you'll see on the illustration, the cervix, which is the lower part that opens into the, the vagina, and then the main part of the uterus, which is called the corpus. And this corpus can easily expand to hold a developing baby. I don't know about you people, but I have always been just mesmerized looking at the way a woman's body grows a child. I think that a pregnant woman is the most beautiful thing in the world. I just love pregnant women. I just think it's just miraculous and just, just so beautiful. So anyway, uh, let's move on. Um, the cervix is, um, it kind of acts as a door to the uterus. It allows, of course, the sperm to travel through to fertilize the eggs, and it also lets the menstrual blood exit into the vagina, but that cervix connects that vagina and the main part of that uterus 
acting as a gateway between them. So it's, it, it, it keeps the unhealthy things out like tampons or bath water or something like that. Now, of course, the vagina is also known as the birth uh, canal. It's about six inches long and it acts as a passageway for the me menstrual flow to leave the body as well as receive the penis during intercourse. Now, it's the canal that joins that cervix to the outside of the body. Now, although the mammary glands are not typically associated with the female reproductive tract, they do produce milk to, of course, nourish the newborn. And if any of you have ever nursed before, as the infant begins to suck, the hormone oxytocin that comes up from our, our hypothalamus and our pituitary gland, that Hormone oxytocin stimulates what we call that letdown reflex. And then, of course, the mother's milk begins to flow. Now, the male reproductive system, its job is to manufacture and deliver sperm to the female. And it consists of the prostate, the testicles, the seminal vesicles, and something called the epididymis. Now, the seminal vesicles, you can see them kind of coiled up there by the bladder, they make a very alkaline, a very sugar-rich fluid that provides the sperm with a source of energy and helps the sperm's ability to move. It also protects the sperm. And this is the fluid that makes, most of, makes up most of the volume of ejaculatory fluid. Now the prostate itself is about the size and shape of a chestnut and it secretes that milky alkaline fluid which activates the sperm into the urethra. And that prostate fluid also helps to nourish the sperm. Now the testicles, whoops, sorry about that. The, the testicles are about the size of extremely large olives, and they lie in that scrotum, in that scrotum sac, and they're um, secured at either end of that structure by what's called the spermatic cord. Now, of course, the testicles lie suspended in that scrotal sac, and this is where the production of sperm occurs in those tiny tubules inside the testes. Also there is where the testosterone is produced. Now, the as you can see, and as you know, the testicles are rather exposed, but the cooler temperature keeping them away from the body is necessary for that production of healthy sperm. Now, the epididymis is, is a long um, coiled up tube that rests on the back side of each of those testicles, and it carries and stores the sperm cells that are created in the testes. And it's also the job of the epididymis to, to bring the sperm to maturity because the sperm that emerge from the testes are immature and they aren't capable of fertilization. Now, as you can see in this illustration, I love this illustration, in nature, plants also have ripened ovaries, if you will. Um, now, nourishing the male and female reproductive system requires an, an excessive amount of nutrients and live foods. We, we need to include fats from really healthy sources like nuts and seeds and avocado and coconut, for instance. And, and it's also beneficial to eat less animal protein and more vegetable protein including vegetarian sources of iron versus meat sources. And the health of the reproductive system also requires high fiber, low glycemic, carbo -rich, uh, carbohydrate rich foods. So if you're eating a lot of, of high sugar or simple carbs, the body's going to store them as fat. And that makes it harder to keep your blood sugar in check. And when this occurs, of course, it's called insulin resistance. We've done a, a webinar on that as well. And this can lead to what's called ovulatory dysfunction or polycystic ovarian syndrome, where a woman's body won't release an egg to be fertilized. So instead of those high sugar, simple carbs, choosing to eat 
complex carbs that are high in fiber, such as whole grains, that can help to decrease the chances of developing insulin resistance. And also low sperm count and poor sperm motility are common in men who are overweight or obese. And so not just men, but of course, we should all try to maintain a healthy body weight and follow a balanced eating pattern. Now, of course, that balanced eating pattern includes a vast variety of different vitamins and minerals and omega-3 fatty acids and proteins and antioxidants and really other types of, of plant compounds. Um, there was a, a, a study in uh, June of 2020, and it was in the peer-reviewed journal, Reproductive Medicine and Biology. And this is a peer-reviewed journal. And the study explored the relationship between nutrition and reproduction. And what they concluded is a number of things. But first of all, that folate, vitamin B9, and vitamin D were extremely effective and that antioxidants are also especially effective for reproductive health. And when it comes to other food choices, we need to load up on dozens of different kinds of fruits and vegetables because depending on the color and what kind of fruit or vegetable it is, they're going to vary in their vitamin and mineral and antioxidant and other plant compound you know, how much is actually in there. And, and when we eat that way, it's going to help create strong sperm and a strong reproductive system. And then also in that study, it showed that in women, vitamins A, B complex, vitamin C, vitamin D, and vitamin E, along with calcium, magnesium, iron, and zinc, all of those exerted a, a very beneficial effect on the female reproductive system. And of course, vitamin D, we talk about that one almost all the time, but vitamin D plays a really important role in ovarian health by altering the sensitivity of the cells to follicle stimulating hormone, FSH, as well as progesterone production and the release of, of progesterone in the female body. Um, vitamin D is also really necessary for the growth of the female's eggs and, their, and the follicle. And the follicle is uh, the shell that surrounds that egg. Now, folate or vitamin B9 is important for reproductive health in both men and in women. And in women, of course, it helps to prevent birth defects. And in men, it plays a um, a role in the health of the sperm as well as in male fertility. Now, because the membranes of the sperm are made up largely of omega-3 fatty acids, care really should be taken to achieve a proper intake of that in our diets. But omega-3, all types of, of cell membranes are composed of omega-3 fatty acids. I mean, they, they play a role in membrane fluidity, in cell health, and, and really offer protection against oxidative damage. Now, omega-3s have also been shown to be important for the implantation of that embryo. Um, Omega-3s are important when we're trying to conceive or during pregnancy. And where we find these in the plant kingdom, of course, would be in the nuts and chia and flax seeds. And even Brussels sprouts have been shown to improve egg quality and lower inflammation throughout the body. Um, when it comes to protein, as I mentioned before, we need to eat more plant protein and less red meat and poultry because Protein from animal sources contains more of the omega-6 fatty acids, which can increase our blood pressure, it can increase clotting in the body, and even create water retention when eaten in excess. So plant-based protein, on the other hand, such as legumes and lentils and quinoa, have all been shown to decrease inflammation in the body, as well as decrease the risk of inf infertility related disorders. So, I mean, at this point, it really is clear to see why these six products, it's so simple, six simple products 
are really so important, not only for the health of our entire body, but also for our reproductive organs in both the male and the female body. And these products contain over four dozen high nutrient plants. And, and this affords us an opportunity to get a vast array of important nutrients on a daily basis without having to purchase and prepare so many different quality foods that are so necessary to our health. Um, and we need to eat clean fruits and vegetables because pesticides can really negatively disrupt our endocrine, our hormonal system by interfering with our hormone production and, and, and in preventing uh, fertility. So remember, nutrients are often reduced during cooking. And Touchstone Essentials ingredients are not only harvested at the peak of nutrition, but they're cold pressed to capture all of their essential nutrients. So in my mind, I have to ask, how would we prepare four dozen different plant foods every day without applying any heat? I mean, it's something to think about. Um, and speaking of pesticides, there's a campaign by um, a group that I follow. They're called the Pesticide Action Network of North America. It's P-A-N-N-A -N -N -A is the acronym. And what they're doing is they, they're right now, they're promoting a worldwide ban on a pesticide called endosulfan because of its concerns that it is a male reproductive toxicant and carcinogen. And there is abundance um, of, of research and evidence that shows that um, endosulfan also has neurotoxicity effects in the body. So really affecting our brain and nervous system. Now, some of the other organophosphate pesticides also have endocrine disrupting properties. And this too can result in reproductive disorders. Um, for example, there's another pesticide called atrazine and that increases estrogen production in the body. But that's not good because it's been linked to more prostate and breast cancer in the body. So we don't need more estrogen from foreign sources. And these foreign environmental estrogens are so much more powerful than the simple hormones that our body creates or produces. So when we take, when we have a something like atrazine in our body, a pesticide, what it does is it, it sends a more aggressive um, production of estrogen that our bodies don't need. And estrogen is pro-growth. So when you think about how it's been linked to prostate and breast cancers, think of those unchecked cell growths being fed too much of this estrogen. Now, PCBs are also categorized as endocrine disruptors, and they're associated with in, impaired production and development of mature sperm, of ovarian uh, dysfunction, endometriosis, abnormal menstrual bleeding, infertility, and alterations in reproductive hormone levels. And there's this very strong evidence that suggests that in utero exposure of the fetus to these estrogenic, but yet anti-androgenic. So again, androgens are kind of like testosterone. So if we've got a chemical like PCB saying, here, here's lots of estrogen, but oh, let's not have too much or even any of that testosterone, well, that's certainly going to interfere with the reproductive development in male offspring. Now, phthalates also exhibit anti-androgenic properties, and this can result in altered male reproductive uh, development. The research is showing that extreme exposure to phthalates can result in undescended testicles and smaller scrotum size, as well as penis size. So again, too much estrogen, not enough testosterone. So phthalate exposure in men has been linked to distorted levels of testosterone, estradiol, follicle stimulating hormone. And then that of course can result in reduced sperm motility. So it's movement. It can, it can result in damaged sperm, lower sperm counts, as well as prostate damage. Now in women, 
with high urinary phthalate levels, the evidence links it to endometriosis, uterine fibroids, and shortened gestational duration. So, I mean, we got to keep that baby in there long enough, right? So research is suggesting that this maternal exposure to phthalates can affect, again, the sex uh, steroid hormonal status in both the fetal and newborn stages of male and female offspring. And in addition, with, this, uh, with these phthalate exposure, premature breast development, premature sexual development, and earlier first menstruation have all been associated with phthalate exposure in young women. So folks, as you know, and I drill this into your head every time I do a webinar, we really need to detox and we really need to detox those who are contemplating pregnancy. Let's do it before they conceive. Let's get these bodies cleaned out before they become pregnant, men and women. And I will be teaching a webinar on prenatal planning in the future so you can watch for that and share that with those that you think need to hear that information. So folks, how can we detox? Well, freshly mined and in its raw state, clinoptilolite, zeolite doesn't do very much because its, it's crystalline structures are kind of pre-filled with pollutants cleaning the areas around it. And it's also too big to be absorbed by the body. So unfortunately, crushed up raw zeolite is what people find in most zeolite supplements on the market today. But as you know, Touchstone Essential does a great job and their zeolite is free of existing pollutants. So it can literally mop up any toxins in the body. And, and not only is it, well, I'll say squeaky clean, but it's nano-sized and, and it's placed within these water molecule clusters. So it's optimized by our body and it really does give us an advanced daily cellular detox, which is really what we need. Everybody needs it. Um, folks, our, our modern world oh, is really a highly toxic one. It really wasn't very joyful writing my book. It, 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 I just was just blown away at how toxic our planet is and how few people really know what's going on. It, it, it really troubled me. But um, having a product like this, just it, it just makes you feel so much better because you know that there's an answer. There is an answer because, you know, our, our, our world is filled with heavy metals and pesticides and herbicides, and there's toxins in the food we eat and the food packaging that our food comes in, in the water we drink, the air we breathe, our cleaning products, our personal care products. So really none of us can escape this. And zeolite really gets to work in, in just minutes. And, and this negatively charged zeolite, it, it works like a magnet and it traps those positively charged heavy metals and other toxicants. And then once those toxicants get inside that zeolite, the toxins are really tightly bound and then they're excreted from our body within hours. So with really with daily exposure, None of us are really exempt from this. And, and we really need to continuously detoxify our bodies and support the organs of detoxification with really high density nutrients. But, and I do this every week as well, don't forget the benefits of CBD on our reproductive health. As you probably are aware by now, CBD interacts with the body's endocannabinoid system. We call that the ECS. And its primary purpose of that ECS is to maintain balance in the body. And the word they use is homeostasis. And how it does so is through various physical and cognitive processes. So we have these CB cannabinoid receptors they're pretty much located everywhere on our body. They're on the skin, on our organs, our bones, our tissues, our glands. And CBD oil has been shown to act as a modulator. Understand what that word means, a modulator of, those, of the body's cannabinoid receptors. And so that makes it more difficult for them to be either overstimulated or understimulated because CBD oil modulates that. Thereby, of course, helping the body achieve that balance, that homeostasis 
so it can function more efficiently. Now, these CBD receptors are found in the female reproductive system as well as in the sperm. And for this very reason, scientists and researchers believe that CBD may be able to positively influence the reproductive systems of both male and female in the same way that it boosts the functions elsewhere in the body. And the, the really interesting thing about CBD is that its chemical structure looks similar to some of the hormones that our own bodies produce. And, and so because of all of this, it's thought that CBD can improve the sperm's ability to fertilize an egg as well as boost ovarian function. So Calm Premium 750. In each dropper full, there's 25 milligrams of a broad spectrum CBD. So it's about a 30 day supply. So if you multiply 30 times uh, 25 milligrams, you'd see that it's 700. So there's 750 milligrams in the bottle at 25 milligrams per serving. Now remember, Olive Touch Stone Essentials CBD oil is, are organic. They contain no THC, no solvents, chemicals, toxicants were used in the processing of this oil. No artificial ingredients were added. Um, it's really fast acting. It's highly absorbable. It's certified non-genetically modified. Now, the Calm Premium 1500 then has 50 milligrams in each of those dropper folds. And again, about a 30 day supply. Now remember, a broad spectrum CBD still contains several of the cannabis plant compounds, but it's typically entirely free of THC. Still has the terpenes and the flavonoids and the cannabinoids, but it's typically entirely free of THC. On the other hand, if a product contains the naturally occurring you know, cannabis extracts and the terpenes and the cannabinoids, but it includes up to 0.3%, which is the legal limit, 0.3% of THC, that's what makes it a full spectrum CBD oil. Now you may remember from our CBD um, update webinar just a few weeks ago, that terpenes are aromatic compounds that are found in plants and they create those characteristic scents, such as the smell of cannabis or lavender or eucalyptus or even an orange peel. So again, Touchstone Essentials Full Spectrum Calm Advanced is THC compliant. The, the, the hemp is naturally low in THC with less than 0.3%. So there aren't going to be any psychoactive effects from that product. Um, folks, the best way to both improve or maintain our good health is to get these nutrients that we need on a daily basis, but we also need to detoxify on a daily basis. And we need to feed our endocrine, I'm, I'm sorry, our endocannabinoid system on a daily basis. And of course, Touchstone Essential products make this possible. So that concludes our presentation this evening, my friends. Um, I'd love you to join Craig and I once again on May 26th, when our webinar that evening is going to focus on prebiotics, probiotics, and our gut microbiome. So thanks for joining us tonight, folks, and happy Mother's Day. Good night, everybody.